ready to look at acids and bases by a new definition. It's the Lewis acid base definition. It is um, just a new way of defining acids and bases. Now, when we look at this definition, it's going to be defined by electrons, and that should make sense to us. When we've heard the word Lewis in the past, it was in conjunction with Lewis structures, where we drew Lewis structures and we showed all the valence electrons as dots around the element symbol. So the Lewis definition involves those electrons. Then it's a transfer again. So the Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor, and the Lewis base is the electron pair donor. So something is, in, is donating an electron pair, something is accepting electron pair, and in that course of donating and accepting, it doesn't donate it completely, it donates it only to the extent that it will form a new bond. So always in this definition, we're going to be looking for the new bond that was formed so that we can decide who was the acid and who was the base. Now before we get into looking at examples of this, I want to just talk a little bit about how this is the broadest definition of all. Um, and we're just going to start with an inner circle. An inner circle here is the most narrow definition. This is the Arrhenius definition. I'll write ARR for Arrhenius definition. In the Arrhenius definition, we had to place the acid or the base into water. And we defined the acid by how it behaved in water. So it's very limiting. We went a little further out from there and we defined Bronsted acids or Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. By the Bronsted definition, we looked at it in terms of proton donating and proton accepting. It doesn't need the water, and so you can include a whole lot more things in this definition. And I'm going to up here write the Bronsted, just to um, refresh our memory on it. The Bronsted or the Bronsted-Lowry acid is a proton donor. And the Lewis base is the proton acceptor. So that is how we define it in terms of protons. And if we want to go a little bit further out in our circle, we have finally our Lewis definition. And we see our Lewis definition here. So something that is fitting in the category of being an Arrhenius um, acid or base would also fit the definition of Bronsted and Lewis. But it's not necessarily true going the other direction. Just because something is defined as a Lewis acid doesn't mean it would um, fit in the category of being an Arrhenius. So there are things that fit outside this circle here that would not fit inside. Okay, so uh, one last thing on this before we go looking at an example. And this is what I do to help me remember my definitions of Lewis acid. I have no problem remembering about um, the Bronsted definition. I'll take my quintessential acid, HCl. I know that it's an acid, hydrochloric acid. It is a proton donor. Acids are proton donors. What's the opposite of a proton? Well, that would be our an electron, okay? What's the opposite of donor? It's the acceptor. So if you have the opposite of the opposite, you're back to still being an acid, all right? That is convoluted, I know, but that is what I use to hold on to. Um, what is a Lewis acid? Opposite of a proton is electron. Opposite of acceptor is donor. The opposite of an opposite is still, it's a base, okay? So there we go. All right, now we're ready to look at an example. The example you see on the screen here is a reaction between BF3 and NH3. And we are, I am showing you the products. I am not going to expect you to predict the products. I will show you the products. As we look at those products, I said that in the Lewis acid base definition, there's always a new bond that's formed. So let's look very closely there. Which one of those is where the new bond is formed? Is it one or is it two or is it three? Well, the new bond is between the boron and the nitrogen, so it is at two. So now let's go to the light board and let's look at 
the same reaction. We know that this is a new bond that's formed. We have to be able to determine who is the acid and, and who is the base. So how did this bond form? These are two electrons. Where did those two electrons come from? Look at the boron and look at the nitrogen. Everything you see here is what you see here. It's all accounted for. That new bond came from those two electrons. The way we represent donating is to go from the electrons to, with a curved arrow, to where it donates it to. So those two electrons are going to this boron, and it doesn't donate and say, here, you have them, I don't want them, because the nitrogen does want them to complete its octet. But the boron will accept those only to the point of sharing. Now, with that being said, I want you to decide which one is the acid and which one, therefore, is the base. All right, let's start with this guy. Is it an acid or is it a base? It is the proton, I mean, electron pair donor that makes it a base. This is the acceptor that makes it the acid. All right, now, does it fit the definition of any of the other ones? Let's think about this. Would it fit the Bronsted definition? Is there a proton swap happening here? Well, there are H's, but are the H's leaving this and going to that? No. So it doesn't fit the definition of a Bronsted. It only fits the Lewis definition of an acid and a base. Let's look at this one. Here is another example. And I'm going to go ahead and write this one on the light board so that we can uh, kind of walk our way through it in a similar fashion. As I'm writing this, I want you to be thinking about this reaction in terms of the Bronsted-Lowry definition or the Arrhenius definition and see if it fits either of those categories. Okay, so these are your two products that get formed from this. All right, let's start with the Arrhenius definition. Arrhenius definition of acids and bases have to do with how it behaves in water. There's water here, okay? And here's the definition of a base. A base is a substance that when added to water will increase the hydroxide concentration. So this fits the definition of a base according to the Arrhenius definition. I mean, according to the Arrhenius definition. Yeah, I said that right. Let's go to the Bron so it's the narrowest definition. Let's go to the Bronsted-Lowry definition. According to the Bronsted-Lowry definition, a base is a proton acceptor. Right here, he has three protons, and now he has four protons. So he accepted one of these H's. So he fits the definition according to the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Now let's see if it fits the definition according to the Lewis definition, okay? It has to, because if it fits the narrowest, it will work its way out. But let's define it. Let's look for our new bond that's formed. Where over here is there a bond that wasn't over here? Well, I see a new bond right here between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. That's the new bond. How did that new bond get formed? Well, it's between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So this nitrogen is donating its electron pair to this hydrogen, okay? Well, this hydrogen can't say, okay, I'll accept your electrons and keep what I have because a hydrogen can only have two electrons at any time connected to it, give it its helium electron configuration. So if it accepts those, he's got to let go of these guys and say, okay, oxygen, you can have these electrons because I got no room for four electrons in my world. All right, so this right here shows the electrons and what they are doing. The nitrogen on the NH3 donated, okay? If it's an electron pair donor, it fits the definition of a Lewis base, okay? If this guy is accepting that electron pair. He is the acid. Now, who accepted it? it was the hydrogen, but the hydrogen was attached to the water. Now, those electrons get donated to the hydrogen. That formed the new bond. Those electrons were put onto that oxygen in its entirety, and that gave us the OH minus. So we see this guy being 
um, fitting the definition of all three. If it fits the narrowest definition, the Arrhenius definition, it will fit the Bronsted-Lowry. If it fits the Bronsted-Lowry, it will fit the Lewis. Opposite is not necessarily true. This fit the Lewis definition, but it did not qualify as a Bronsted and it did not qualify as an Arrhenius. So we have examined the definition and there's of a Lewis acid and Lewis base. There's one last thing that I want to kind of talk about. Um, when you're given a whole reaction like I've given you here, it's not hard to determine what's the acid and what is the base. But sometimes you'll run across them just giving you a substance and they say, okay, with this substance, would it be an acid or would it be a base according to the Lewis definition? And I just want to give you a couple things to think about. One thing is the charge. Okay, if you're given something with a charge, if it's negatively charged or positively charged, if it's negatively charged, it is going to be a donor of electrons. Okay, negative charge because there's extra electrons in there. So this will be an electron pair donor, and that makes it a base. If it's positively charged, okay, then it's going to be accepting because opposites attract. So it would accept electron pair. So electron pair acceptor. And that would make it an acid. So sometimes just by looking at the charge, you can know whether something would be likely to behave as a base or an acid. If it's neutral, okay, it has no charge. It's a, a neutral substance. What you want to do is draw the Lewis structure. And you're going to look at the central atom. This is typical scenario here. I'll just talk through it, okay? Look at the central atom of that Lewis structure. So here's my central atom of my Lewis structure. If there are lone pairs on that, they are likely to be a donor. Okay, so here is a Lewis structure, lone pair, likely to be a donor. Here is a Lewis structure. I'll just draw one real quick. Let's say this guy was involved. It has electron pairs on it, but the central atom doesn't have any, so he is likely to be an electron pair, not donor, but acceptor. So if there are lone pairs on the central atom, it's typically a donor. If there are not, it's typically a acceptor. Now here is a case where electron pairs on the central, it wasn't the donor. It can be though, all right? So this guy could be in a different scenario, an electron pair donor, um, if it were behaving as a base instead. Um, so these are typical statements if you're just looking at a substance. But if something can go in either direction, it can be a donor or an acceptor, we can't just say, here, look at this and tell me what it's going to be. We would have to give you the whole reaction. But if we can look at something and we know that it behaves most typically in one way or the other, these are your quick and dirty rules. Negatively charged, donor, positively charged acceptor, Lewis structure, electron pair on the central, it's a donor, no electron pair on central, it is an acceptor. All right, so that's all I really want you to understand and know about in terms of Lewis acid-base definition.